Your dream, though, for higher education had this, like, wonderful validating piece. Like, your mom always was like, you're so smart, like, saw something really beautiful in you. And yet it was also coupled with this, like, sort of world made of helium feeling where you're like, how does this even work? Like, thank you. But, like, who would <laughs> who would pay for this? How does one get there? Uh, what are applications? How are, I mean, you had this massive obstacle course to even try to imagine in getting from like the most de desperate circumstances to like this dream world. Yeah. Cause I had a, I was, I had a mom who was like, you know, you're a genius, you're brilliant. And I was like, shut up mom. Like you're getting me into trouble <laughs> because the doctors would hear her say that. And they'd be like, okay, her mom is delusional. And oh. Emmy is like feeding off of her mom's delusion. And yeah, I mean, and in hindsight, I do think a lot of my mom's faith in me was delusional. Like it was not fully like based in reality. It was more of like a feeling and that she's my mom than yes. a reality, yes. like it, in fact. But it really did, it made a huge difference in thinking like, okay, that's something that's an option for me. Yeah. Um, and so I ended up being discharged from this locked facility and going to foster care. And I luckily lived in a home that was in an amazing school district where I had teachers who cared a lot about me and one teacher who really encouraged me to apply to summer camp. And this is something that people in foster care almost never get to do. And there were so many different factors that played into it, but a big part of it was like my mom's support. And so I went to this beautiful, idyllic place in the woods with all these other 16-year-olds. Um, it was for photography camp, and I got to photograph other teenage girls um, looking cute. <laughs> and at the end of the time, my teacher was like, you should apply to boarding school. Mm. There's like a boarding school that the camp runs, and you can go there. And I was so scared because I was like, if I go to boarding school, then the pressure is really on to try to get into a, a elite school. Yeah. Um, and I went and interlock in my high school, it's like a feeder school, but for orchestras I see. and like conservatories. And so there was not like the counseling infrastructure yes. there to, be, to like to help like, me yes. get into Harvard or <laughs> Yale or Columbia. And so I was like, and I was like, I have this background that I'm gonna need to explain. Right. Like my freshman year, my freshman grades uh -huh. are like from three different schools, one of which was a locked classroom. Wow. And I knew that I needed like serious help. And I got um, I basically begged a private college counselor mm. to take me on for free. Wow. And she did. And so she was like my guide through this at, at that point. But it was still just like you know, a totally different world than the one that I had come from and one where I needed to like present my my best self, all my best angles when I had been so used to being forced to like, OK, take responsibility, blame yourself. Like if you don't do that, like you're a problem. Oh. It was like 180 to see like, OK, in this world, you're going to pretend that you're perfect. You're the successful overcomer and you have never had a mental health problem in your life. Oh like you gosh. went through all this stuff, yeah. but you're just stronger for it. You, you had this like amazing insight that they didn't, it wasn't enough for you just to have survived. Like you had to overcome. Did it feel like telling a lie about yourself when you're like, I, I have overcome? Or were there moments where it felt true? It absolutely felt like a lie. Did it really? Because it was yeah. a lie. I was oh, not yeah. an overcomer. Right. And in some ways, you know, I was still. Yeah like alive, I had gone to boarding school, but I remember the summer before my senior year, I was 16 and I had couch surfed with like staying with like 10 different friends until I ran out of friends, no more friends left. And I, so I was sleeping in the backseat of this 1992 Corolla. Oh, and I remember going into the library and being like, okay, it's time for me to write my essay of triumph. <laughs> and it was just like such a farce to be like, okay, I'm writing this essay about how I'm stronger because I slept in my car. And like tonight, I'm probably going to sleep in my car again. And like, if I don't sleep in my car, it's because I go to a shelter. 
and sleep at a shelter. And so it was, it, it felt like a huge lie. I love your, like, very, you've got this, you've got, like, the two frameworks side by side and where people usually just have one. They either have, like, the hyper-individualism where it's like, what can I do? What am I responsible for? What are the side doors to, like, help me get where I need to go? And then the structural thinking, which is, what the hell? Why was I supposed to need side doors? Like, why can't this room just be normal and safe <laughs> and have, like, basic amenities in it? So you're, like, you're, yeah, your structural brain is kind of, if it must have been so hard to always be trying to figure out then, like, Who's responsible for me? Am I alone in all of this, or is some is there anybody else that's gonna is any is anyone else gonna help me keep all the walls of this house up? Yeah, and I think I felt just completely responsible for everything for so long, like throughout my whole like high school time, yeah. honestly into my mid twenties. And if you had asked me like, okay, what were the systemic things that were affecting you, I wouldn't have been able to tell you anything. Nothing at all. Like, and it was really, like, I had to go back and, like, read stuff. Yeah. And um, and talk to a bunch of people, like, tell a bunch of people my story and be like, what do you think this means? Like, I, to me, it's just, like, a series of events. Yeah. Right? And then to go back. Yeah. And reconstruct, like, oh, okay, this is, like, what's happening. And this is a thing that happens for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I think that that the experience of you know being one of these overcomers who like goes through these institutions and then like spoiler alert Mm -hmm. gets into harvard Mm -hmm. it's fundamentally such an isolating experience and i think it's isolating by design often Uh where like i won the scholarship from the horatio alger association but they literally had this 104 deserving scholars oh my gosh like in the balcony of this ballroom like there was a real bald eagle who flew across they played the national real anthem eagle. it was real it was real his name is challenger <laughs> you can google him i did it's he's terrifying <laughs> it's really scary. i've seen an it's eagle miracle. i've seen an eagle released inside of a mega church one time and it was really <gasps> stressful <laughs> the spirit yeah. was with you we, like hit one of the windows and it was oh, it no. was the dark time <laughs> It was it was metaphorically rich, but it was. But even like I mean Horatio Alger, of course, like the yeah nineteenth century like rags to riches dime novels that say that every scrappy actually and also the real Horatio Alger stories like there's a, a million it's just like a zillion orphans right and they're deserving mm-hmm. obviously otherwise they don't get but they're always saved by a wealthy relative yeah like none of the actual Horatio Alger stories have people bootstrapping they all just get like some stroke of luck comes to a virtuous person which is like totally different than the way we think about like the rat making its way through the maze of capitalism absolutely yeah but i mean it's less of that's less of a convenient story like it's much more convenient to be like okay her little little ragged dick got there because of his sheer force of will and his like cuteness um because we were we were there and i started to realize i was like i think that this is a conservative organization and they told us they were like fifty thousand students applied for these 104 scholarships Whoa. yeah and it's like 0.02 percent whoa and then they looked out at us and they were like you are proof that anyone can do it in the free enterprise system and we don't need government handouts oh, like yeah most <laughs> yeah. and i was like i was like looking like si- like my hands were folded in my lap as i'd been taught and i was like looking side by side and being like is anybody else think that this is bizarre oh my gosh and meanwhile you probably would have been like actually I would like very well-funded supports for foster care homes and 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 educational benefits, and I would really appreciate uh, more social services for teenagers who who have who might need to emancipate themselves at at, at early yeah. stages. Like all kinds of structural things would have made your life completely different instead of the hanging by a thread feeling all the time. <laughs> 